Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we went to our first court day, we cross-examined Trillo, we had an okay time, it was gross, but you know what, we came out of there with our case kind of unscathed, it's kind of looking up for us. In this episode, we're going to get to a very interesting part of this case. So without further ado, let's get into this. Sweetie! You have to believe me, I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene! So then where were you when the murder took place? We talked about it yesterday, remember? I was in the ringmaster's room. And while you were there, it was the ringmaster who left the room, right? Exactly! He told me to wait in the room because he would be right back. That's when the ringmaster headed to the scene of the crime, right? That's what it seems like. But the ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Huzzah! Huzzah! Oh, sweetie, I just remembered. I went straight to straight to the ringmaster's room, still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means. It, it means that the ringmaster could have taken his costume and went out looking for, like Max. Zah! Fabulous! That's a fabulously possible possibility! <laughs> well done, Nick. However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Huh. If you think about it, all they found at the crime scene was my silk hat. What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double, huh? Wow, Max, I never thought of that. You should be a detective or something. Well, I was never quite sure what to be when I grew up. Magician or president? Huzzah! You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. That's really cool. Fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well. I will now call of my next witness, a pitiful clown with the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. Will Mr. Lawrence Curls please take the stand? Why did you just call him a pitiful clown? Because he is, Phoenix. The witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the Name and occupation. Will the witness please inform the court why he is speaking autobiographical gibberish? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in court. I've never been in a courtroom in my life. I wasn't quite sure what joke best suited this sort of occasion. What in the world are you talking about? You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. Since it's easy to see your occupation, please state your name for the court. Oh, yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Mom, do I have to wear pants? This sign says no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> okay, okay, how about this? Hey, have you met my proctologist, Dr. Seymour Butts? How was that one? <laughs> but a couple of clowns, they were up no good. Your name? Lawrence Curls, professional funny man, also known as Mother Clown. You witnessed the scene at around 10.15 p.m. the day of the murder, correct? Yes, yes it is. Very well, Mr. Curls. Will you please testify to what you saw that evening? A rabbi, a priest, and a Rastafari walk into this plaza without the humor, please. Okay. Ah, poor Mo can't be his normal stoogy self in court. I know, I know. I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. I haven't been able to make people laugh for ten years. No matter what I say, I, all I get in return is a vacant stare and a polite applause. 
since no one ever laughed at my jokes, I've taken laughing to myself. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. Imagine my predicament. I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. But I keep trying. I even tried to come up with jokes just for today. But this atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. I decided to try making everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone, what do you think of me? How am I doing? Um, aren't we, aren't we the ones supposed to be asking the questions here? Fitness. Cool. We will listen to your call for help after the court proceedings are over. Thus, please stick with the facts of this case. Really? You'll really hear me out? Well, I'll make sure that one of my staff will be your straight man later. Thank you! Thank you! I can't wait! Poor Gumshoe. Now that that's settled, shall we begin once again with the testimony? Of course we can! I'll talk for as long as you want! The night of the murder, after practice was over, I went straight back to my room. You've no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. That's when I saw two silhouettes. They were a bit far away, though. It was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. Yuck. That's very interesting. If this eyewitness account is to be believed, I have enough to pass the judgment right away. Of course you can. There is no way this account can be criticized. However, the witness is a bit... How do you say? Off kilter. Almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. <laughs> that, must be be that must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the defense's cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, you've got to find some kind of contradiction in his testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. I'm afraid that if you push this witness too far, it would bring disaster upon the court. Thus, I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in pointless saber, saber rattling. I understand, Your Honor. If you cause this clown to stray from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one with the corny jokes. So if you didn't catch what they just said there, what they basically said was we're not allowed to press Mo at all, pretty much, or else they will penalize us for just pressing. Not even presenting wrong, wrong evidence or anything like that, just pressing. Which is already bad on its own, but the solution to this case is from pressing. So you've kind of got a guess. I mean, I guess there's some sort of way that you can just uh, figure it out. But still, this absolutely sucks. I'd suggest saving here if you haven't already. Uh, the HD trilogy port thingy kind of makes it easier to save scum, so make use of that here especially. And even if you're on the DS version now, I'd suggest saving because... Ugh. Anyways, the statement you want to press is statement number three, the one where he says, I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. You just happened to glance out the window? You could say that. You could also say I peeked, stared, glimpsed, peeped, eyeballed. Mr. Curls! Oh, I guess synonyms aren't allowed either. What should I do? I wonder if I should press him further on this issue. Keep pressing. Exactly why did you look out of your window that night? Why? Why? Clowns don't need a reason to look out their windows, do they? And that's not what I meant. I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday. Once I had tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You forgot? Your Honor, the witness looked out of his window upon hearing a loud sound. 
he did not just simply glance out of his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? Owie, owie, owie! That's not something you just forget to mention. Um, yeah, what she said. I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Curls. Please, very well. Mr. Curls, please revise your testimony. This should start turning the tables in our favor. I heard a huge noise outside the window, and that's what made me look outside. Press this as well. What was the sound like? Well, I guess it kind of sounded like, hmm, I guess you could say. Mr. Curls, may the court remind you that humor is unnecessary. Doh, how'd you know that I was going to make a joke? <laughs> I guess that the sound sounded like, uh, I suppose it sounded like someone getting hit with something very hard. Yep, that's what it sounded like, honestly. Someone getting hit, huh? But then, you went to look out the window and you saw... That's when I saw two silhouettes. Now, I think we need to... It was the ringmaster, uh... Kept watching them all... So, we next we want to go to this statement that says, I kept, I kept watching them and all of a sudden, Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. You say you saw the ringmaster get clonked over the head. Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. He really does enjoy the completely random non sequitur. What did you say the victim was struck with? You mean weapon? I have no idea. The weapon wasn't found at the murder scene, right? No, no, no. You did say you saw the entire thing, didn't you? Well, I, um, yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no, I didn't. I didn't see a weapon. <laughs> Mo. Did you or did you not see the crime of the, the crime of murder committed that night? I will not permit you to harass my witness in this manner. You'd better have an excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown. Because if you don't, you know what is waiting for you. A nice penalty. Oh, wasn't that a bit melodramatic? V so what will it be then, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear basis to believe my witness did not see the crime? Of course I do. I've got a great reason to make my claim. And I suppose you will be telling us all that great reason? Of course I will. The reason is... The witness's very own testimony! What is the meaning of that, Mr. Wright? Most said that he heard a sound like a thump of someone getting hit. Hmm, he did say that. However, Mo just stated the following under oath. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clunked the ringmaster over the head. If Mo's to be believed when he says he looked out the window upon hearing a sound, there's no way that he could have seen Max clonk anyone. In 1972, a crack clown you- Mr. Curls, how do you respond to Mr. Wright's assessment? They didn't come in. These clowns promptly escaped from a maximum security clown car. Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C-Team theme to anger this court? So this is a reference to something that I haven't watched before called the A-Team. Which, I guess makes more sense in context. But out of context, hearing Mo talk about crack clown conspiracies... Is just wild. No, 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 I'm just stalling for time while I jog my memory. Great job, Nick. These types of witnesses always seem to have a selective memory. You just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Well, um... Ah, you're back from your jog. <laughs> well, it pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much. When I looked down my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped me fill in the gaps in my statement. Von... Von Karma! tampering with witnesses again. So now you are saying that you did not see the defendant clonk the ringmaster. Yes. When I looked out my window, the ringmaster had always already checked out. Checked out? Yup. He was on permanent vacation, as they say. <laughs> Mr. Carls. Your Honor, 
You did not witness the actual crime. However, you still say you saw the criminal, correct? Yes, exactly. The ringmaster was slumped over and I saw someone silhouette next to him. Very well, then please testify to the silhouette you saw. I expect the truth. And if I even catch a hint of a joke from you, I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Got it? I got it. I was a bit far away, but that shadow could only been could only belong to Max. There's no doubt in it, especially since I saw his uppity symbols. His silk hat, that black cloak, they were all there. His face was silhouetted, but there was no doubt that it was him. His cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. Hmm, it does seem as if the defendant was at the scene of the crime. You took your time realizing that, didn't you? Whatever, that should be enough, right? It is decisive testimony. Was Max really at the crime scene that night? He said he wasn't there. We have to keep believing that. Alright, Mr. Wright. Commence your cross-examination. So I believe we should be good to press again. I might be wrong on that, though. Don't you think that you're going a little overboard with how explicit you're being? That shadow belonged to Max. It's an awfully firm statement, don't you think? What are you getting at? I'm just saying that one of your fellow performers' life is on the line here. Are you truly, 100% absolutely certain that it was Max? I'm not the kind of person who would lie about something as serious as this. The silhouette I saw was Max. I'm convinced of that. Doesn't seem like he's jumping to conclusions this time. Let's go over this again, then. What makes you so sure that you saw Max that night? Okay, yeah, we are cool to press. Trillo said the same thing, but if it was just the symbols, then even I could have been wearing them. What if someone had just taken Max's symbols and worn them? I thought of that myself, but just looking at the shape of the face I saw it must have been Max. Hmm, you're sure of that? Such a silly little boy. He threw his entire case headlong into a trap. Still cat, black cloak, they were all there. You're sure that is what you saw that night? Exactly what I said I saw is exactly what I saw. I've got eyes like a hawk. Um, don't birds have terrible night vision? But that's not all I saw. His face was silhouetted, but there's no doubt that it was him. You were able to see that kind of detail from your window? There was a light near the crime scene, scene of the crime. Anyone with a decent eyesight should have been able to see that much. Out of curiosity, Mo, what is your eyesight like? I can see like a hawk out of my a left eye, and like an eagle out of my right eye. Our records say his eyesight is a perfect 2020. That must mean he could have seen the crime scene clearly. Hmm, the more we look into this matter, the more suspicious it becomes. Hey, you asked me what my eyesight was like, not what it, well, what it actually was. Cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. So, you didn't actually see what the criminal was holding? That's correct. I've been curious to know what caused that loud noise. It must have been something incredibly hard. Oh, yuck. Too bad they haven't found the murder weapon to know for sure. They claim it was a blunt object. At least it says so in the autopsy report. Trillo's testimony and now Moe's. It really seems like Max is the killer. N Nick, you gotta find a contradiction in this. It's not going to be enough. What? I have to prove that Moe saw someone other than Max that night. That's the only thing that'll help. I've gotta do it. And that's something we're gonna go ahead and do in the next episode. This is kind of a thing that I've been doing now where I do the pressing in one episode and then the contradicting in another episode. So we'll get to that all in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!